prayed and believed your whole life. And here you are. Explain that to me. What do you say to people that are offended by your show? Because you pray to Jesus in every episode. If we disown him, he'll disown us. When a 12 year old watches his mother dying of cancer, a God who would allow that is not worth believing in. Life is really a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury and signifying nothing. Name? Uh, Wheaton. Josh Wheaton. Philosophy 150. You might want to think about a different uh, instructor. Come on, man, it can't be that bad. Think uh, Roman Coliseum, people cheering for your death. I am Professor Radisson, and this is Philosophy 150. I would like to bypass senseless debate altogether and jump to the conclusion which every sophomore is already aware of. There is no God. All that I require from each of you is that you fill in the papers I've just given you with three little words. God is dead. Mr. Wheaton, is something wrong? I can't do what you want. I'm a Christian. If you cannot bring yourself to admit that God is dead, then you will need to defend the antithesis. I think of Jesus as my friend. You think Jesus is God? I don't want to disappoint him. So your acceptance of this challenge may be the only meaningful exposure to God and Jesus they'll ever have. Hey, to me, he's not dead. I don't want anyone to get talked out of believing in him just because this professor thinks they should. Mr. Wheaton, are you ready? We're going to put God on trial. If you think you're smarter than me, Wheaton, do not try to humiliate me in front of my students. In that classroom, there is a God. I'm him. This experiment is over. You get to decide who the most important person in your life is. Me, Professor Radisson. But I have to do this thing. Like it's something that God wants me to do. I, I can't just turn away from it. You just want to ensnare them in your primitive superstition. What I want is for them to make their own choice. That's what God wants. You have no idea how much I'm going to enjoy failing you. Yeah, but who are you really looking to fail? Me or God? God's not dead. He's surely alive. He's living. supports his existence, you know the truth. So why do you hate him? It's a very simple question. Why do you hate God? God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, like a liar. I'm here with Shane Harper to talk about the film God is Not Dead. Shane, welcome to Real Life. Can you hear me? Uh, sounds like you're in a, in, in, a, in a pretty fun place. They're in Los Angeles. I am. <laughs> I am. I'm having a coffee, yes. It's uh, at a nice little coffee shop that I really enjoy. Well, well I, I haven't seen the film yet, but I saw, I saw some of the previews and a little bit of the trailer. It looks like it's really a well-done movie. It looked like the script was well-written. Well Is that what attracted you to it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, like, I like the script a lot. Um, I liked it a lot because it had to do with apologetics and the idea of, of you know, defending one's faith and, um, and uh, you know, the, the setting in the classroom, you know, doing these three dissertations um, about the existence of God was just, it seemed very, it seemed very intriguing to me because it's something that I've been interested in ever since I was, uh, you know, a young teenager. You know, reading, uh, you know, my favorite author, you know, C.S. Lewis and, oh. and uh, all of his great, all of his great work. So, so you received Christ, you became a Christian when you were a young guy? Yeah, well, we, you know, I grew up in church. Um, and, uh, and so I, I, I honestly, from the time, you know, for as long as I can remember, I've, I've been, you know, I've been going to church and um, always loved being a part of the church. And uh, it's certainly... Um, simple to just be like, all right, well, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to make all the right decisions and, uh, and be a neat, you know, a neat young man that everyone likes. And I think that can kind of be the, the trap that people can fall into. And that I, you know, was kind of feeling myself, you know, um, I gotcha. kind of growing, yeah, kind of growing up in the church, but yeah. So. Well, that's, that's a com you know, Shane, that's a common thing to come in through a Christian family and you have to find your own place to declare allegiance. You know, there is a time when you have to decide what you believe. And I think your character stood up and, and kind of went through that metamorphosis in the film, God is yeah. Not Dead. When, when, when uh, it opens on March the 21st, what, what would you like to see this film do in, it, in its open? 
No, I, you know, I, I'm, I just, you know, I want people to enjoy it. I want, um, I want, you know, Christians and, you know, people who aren't religious at all to enjoy it alike. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I want everyone to kind of take something out of it and for, um, you know, for conversations to be started, you know, healthy, you know, informed, compassionate, you know, conversations, you know, to be kind of brought up through the movie and through the storyline and through the narrative of what it's saying, you know, because I think it's an important thing to talk about and I don't think it, it should be, um, you know, it should be brushed under the rug, you know, I mean, this, these things are important, you know, it's yeah. like, why are we here? And what's our purpose? I mean, that's an important thing to talk about, you know. Well, we want to thank you for being on the program with us. Thank you for taking a stand and making a film that says something. And we'll look forward to your next project. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. God bless you.